In this video you will learn what is cookie authentication, how does it work in comparison to GVT authentication and how to implement it inside Node.js. And as you can see here I have a nice diagram of cookie authentication. So on the left we have our user and it sends credentials, so login and password, to our server. The goal of our server is to generate a cookie and this is just some random string. And we are storing this string inside our database and we also attach this string as our cookie header inside our HTTP request, which actually means our backend attaches a cookie inside the request. And our client should not do anything, we simply get a request back and this cookie is directly attached to our client with every next request which actually means our client is doing our next request and our backend directly knows that we are authenticated because we can on the backend read this cookie and inside this cookie we can find and serialize our user inside the database. And if for some reason we want to log user out, we must remove this record, this cookie or how it is called session from our database. Now the next question, what is the difference between cookie authentication and GVT authentication? If you don't know, cookie authentication is older approach and GVT or JSON Web Token is newer approach. The main idea is GVT authentication can be used in any way. Cookie authentication can be used only inside web. For example, if you want to create an API and you want authentication inside your mobile application, you can't use cookie authentication. Why is that? Because inside mobile application you don't have a browser, which means you can implement authentication only with the help of some custom token like for example GVT token. But as you can see here, cookie authentication is much easier because our client should not do anything at all. We simply attach cookie inside backend and this cookie is coming to us again. So now let's implement cookie authentication on the real example inside node application. Here I already prepared for us a small express application so we can start building cookie authentication on top of it. As you can see here is our express application, we just inject here body parser to parse JSON and I created here an array of users. The main idea is that I won't show it with the real database, we will simply store all our data inside memory of our node process. And this is totally fine because it doesn't really make any difference if your user and your session is coming from the database or just from the array inside your memory. It is working in exactly the same way. As you can see here we have two different requests. First of all app get on slash private and here we simply sending back a string. The main idea is that we want to make this request only for locked in users, this is why here we must update it later. And also here I have a login request where inside we are trying to find the user by body username, which actually means inside our body to login we are providing username and password. And this is a typical authentication inside any project. The main difference is this single liner inside real project will be a database request, but in our case here we are just trying to find the user inside our array of users by unique username. If we didn't find the user or our password inside body is not 1 to 3, then we are throwing an error. If everything is fine, then we simply return a user. And inside real application you won't have a password 1 to 3, you need to implement password comparison. But it doesn't have anything to do with cookie authentication. This is why I don't want to make this video more difficult by using real database. Let's check how our application is working. As you can see our server here is started, we can jump directly to Postman and here we want to make a post request on localhost 3001 slash and here we'll be login. And inside our body we must provide username and password. And as you can see, as a result, we are getting our user with ID1 and username foo. Obviously, if here I will provide a user which does not exist, we will get incorrect email or password, which means it is working exactly like a real application. Now we can start to implement cookie authentication on top of it. And actually for this we must install two additional packages. So here we can write yarn add and first of all it is cookie parser because we are using express on the backend and cookie parser package helps us to work with cookies in an easy way. 
And the next package that we need is UUID. This is a special package which allows us to generate unique strings. Now let's jump inside our project and here on the top we can require first of all our cookie parser. And here it is coming from our package that we just installed, this is cookie parser. Now here after our body parser we can add cookie parser, this is why here app use cookie parser just with round brackets and we are good to go. The next thing that I want to create is a storage for our sessions. And actually from this diagram you can understand that inside our database we typically will have an additional table with all our sessions. And every single time when the user is logged in we are storing this new session inside the database. In our case we have our database here and this is just an object with our sessions. And every single time when we are logging in a user we are storing new session inside our sessions object. Now we need to update our login method. This is totally fine to get here a user and check if it is a valid user. But after this we must generate this unique string which will be our cookie header and which we will store inside our sessions. This is why here let's create our session token. And session token is just a unique string. This is why here we can require a library UUID that we just installed. Now here inside our session token we can simply use UUID dot version 4 and it will give us back a unique string. The next thing that we want to do is generate our expiration date. The main idea is that we want our cookie to expire. If for example you are working with money and you are implementing banking system then maybe you want an expiration time like 5 minutes because your application must be really safe. The main idea is that when our cookie is expired it will be simply removed from our client and we should not do anything about it. Now we want to create our expiration date because we don't want our cookie to last forever, at some point we want to log user out. If you are working for example in banking system then it makes a lot of sense to make a short expiration time. If it is not that important then you may set your logged in time for one year for example. This is why here we want to create a new property which will be expires at and here we can simply call new date and this is a current time set full year and inside we want to provide exactly the same date plus one. This is why here new date dot get full year plus one. Now we want to store our session inside the database and our database is the object sessions. This is why here inside our session object we can write session token. This is our unique string of our session. And inside we are writing the object first of all with expires at and secondly with user id because this is exactly our user that we want to get later from session and find it inside database. So we successfully stored our session now we must add a cookie to our request. This is why here res cookie and we are setting here first of all some name for example session token. After this we are setting a value, this is our unique session token and the last thing here will be our options and we want to set here max age which will be our expires add. This is exactly when our cookie will be removed. Let's check if it's working. I don't have any errors here, let's jump inside postman and hit send. As you can see here we successfully got our user back, but let's check what we have inside cookies. And here this cookie session token was attached directly to our request and here this is our UUID unique value. Which actually means our client should not do anything at all, we successfully got a cookie from our backend and now every next request of our client will be authorized. This is why now it is time to protect our private route. So here we have just resent but we want to do a lot of stuff. First of all we want to try and read our session token. Because only our locked in user can have this correct session token. This is why here let's read it from our request cookies and we're reading here session underscore token. If for some reason we didn't get a session token then we just throw for zero one unauthorized. So here we can write ok if we don't have our session token then we want to return res status and here for zero one. After this we must try to find a session inside the database. Because if we don't have a session then we are not logged in. This is why here let's try to get current user session and we are getting it from our sessions session token. 
If we didn't find our current user session, then we throw unauthorized again. And the last check that we can do, but it is not mandatory, we can check expiration date. So here we can check that our current user session dot expires at is less than new date, and new date means now, which actually means it is already expired, and we can simply throw here our 401. Now here I want to console log what we have, and we have here our current user session. It is important to remember that every single time when our server is restarted, all our data inside memory are deleted, which actually means if we are logged in and we created a session, but our server was restarted, then our session is removed. This is not a real database, which actually means if you are testing this private route, you must first of all make a POST request after server restart, and then you need to make a request before you will restart your server again. This is why here let's try to log in and set the session token, and after this I want to make a GET request, and here is our slash private. I'm hitting here send, and as you can see here is our body, hello authorized user. But now inside our console you can see current user session, and this is an object with expires at and user ID. And now we can directly use this user ID to find our user inside the database. This is why here we can just find our current user, and for this we can simply make a find request inside our users, and here we are checking user ID if it's equal our current user session dot user ID. So after this we have full access to our current user, and we can simply throw it here for example inside response, so here we have our current user dot username. Let's check if it's working. As you can see, our server was restarted, which means we don't have a session anymore. Now we must jump inside Postman and make a POST request. I'm hitting here send, we're getting back a user, and inside cookies we have our session token, and it was saved inside the backend. Now I'm jumping to the GET request to slash private, and I'm hitting send. And here we have our response, hello authorized user foo. And actually this foo is exactly our authorized user, which means we successfully authenticated the user by token that we got from the client. And actually, if you are interested to know how GVT authentication is working and how to implement it inside Node.js, make sure to check this video also.